Good morning, world. It is Monday, June 28th. Yay! Can't believe where this month went. So I hope you guys had a great weekend. I did. That is for sure. Uh, we had a ball hanging out. We, uh, Lilo, Robin, and myself, uh, came in and transformed. I got lipstick on my teeth. That's a true friend, John. Thank you. Um, start over. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> it is June 28th, 10.01 <laughs> a.m. California time. So anyways, um, as I was saying, Lilo was here. Robin was here. We worked on this studio for two and a half, almost three full days, all three of us. And it is so organized, I can't hardly stand it. I, I will tell you right now, I could not have done it without those two women. I wouldn't have even known where to start or what to do. So when we got done with it, and it's not completely done, I'm still waiting for a built-in, but what we did do was just, uh, we did a video at the end where Lilo gave a tour and we showed little things things here and there and how problem areas were solved and stuff like that. And um, we'll show that this Friday. And again, it's not completely finished yet, but man, we are on the home stretch and I have totally fallen in love with P-Touch Labeler. And speaking of labeling, on Wednesday, before Lilo even came, we did a video on different really cool ways to label your stuff. So we'll do that on Wednesday and then on Friday, the big reveal. So let me show you my first studio. I just, I just found this picture. There was one set of drawers we forgot to go through. Actually, I told him it was fine and I opened it up and almost got sick, okay? So that's what I'm working on right now, before this and after this. So this is my very first studio. Hey, there it is. Man, I wish I still had that Ames table. That was the real deal. And then that was my complete, complete storage unit for fabric right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and you got to love the foo-foo curtains to the right and the black and white TV <laughs> with the antenna. Oh my gosh, have things changed? That is just wonderful. But when it's all said and done, I don't care if you're in a closet, if you're under a stairwell, if you're whatever, claim your space. All right. Also, uh, this weekend, uh, yesterday to be exact, Jerry came over with the two kids and John wanted to take them out to the backfield and have them run around in cars and this and that. And Lennox was like, I want to be with Bubby. So we crafted yesterday. And had we not cleaned this place out, I would have never found everything. So I'll show you what we're working on. We had so much fun and it's not done yet. All right. So what we're doing is we're doing a shadow box. Let me dump some of this junk out. A shadow box. Okay. And I love, and everything was game. Everything was game. And that's Libby Williamson's artwork that we're putting up there. And what we're making is... <laughs> Olaf's, a girl Olaf and a boy Olaf with a mohawk. And we're going to put it together in the diorama. All right. And then look at this really cool stuff I got. Um, woo! So she's decided that it's going to go up here like this. So I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, she wanted one thing that I said no to, and it was to be exact, this for today's lesson. I said, I can get you something else, but you can't have that. So well, let's take a look. I think I have some quilts for us to look at you people. I'm so thrilled that you're willing to share like this. Okay. So this is Joanne's and stop my heart right now. She used nine patch for the center, for the spools. That was, that's brilliant. Brilliant. I love it. And also note, she didn't use white for her background. She used a darker for the middle and a lighter for the outside. I'm very taken by this particular quilt. Then we have Jude with dots. Super fun. Love the applique at the bottom. It looks like that's dimensional, isn't it? I just noticed that. How 
awesome is that? Let's get a blow that baby up and take a look. Oh my gosh. I just noticed that. Love it, Jude. Absolutely love it. And I'll give you a hint. If you like vases, get prepared for next year's BOM. Okay, then then this is Jude's Sequoia Sampler. And if I remember correctly, Jude, you're from Australia, right? Um, look how what we started doing as a group, how she has shifted and changed it. To me, that is the ultimate compliment as a designer is when people take an idea, a sprig of an idea, and then they grow it into a big tree, just like this. And I, I, we are working on the forum, guys. I just am so frustrated with that. I can't stand it. And so you can send me your images at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. Okay, and then it took me a minute for this one, Evelyn, to say, okay, what's different? Oh my gosh, the border's different. Did you like, did you order extra fabric or something? I mean, that, look at the wonkiness of the whole thing. Fabulous. Speaking of extra fabric, this fabric, Pat got hold of me and Yoder's in Chippewa, Ship, I'm saying it wrong, Chippewa, um, they have it. They've got this uh, kaleidoscope fabric. So if you, and I mean, I don't know anybody else in the world who has it, but if they get calls today, it'll be maybe some of you who couldn't get the kit or going to get hold of them. So it's Yoder's in Chippewa, Ship, 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 <laughs> What can I say? apparently not a lot. <laughs> and then Suzanne sent me this and um, she, after she quilts it, she's going to be doing some more embellishing on it. Um, this is really different and I like it a lot. And she said she was a little nervous about using print and piece fuse light in those petals, but as she was applicating them down, because it's not paper, because it's a fiber product, it started to break down and soften up. And I just noticed the little bees in there. How cute is that? I mean, this is a great scrap quilt. All right. And speaking of that, um, I got from M-G-D-A-M-I-C-O, I don't know your name, um, a letter that your print in piece, you got one of the packages without the shiny side, which means it, it's not print in piece fuse light, it's print in piece. If you get hold of me, I'll make sure you get the right product in your hand. But in the meantime, I would consider using just like a glue stick or something like that to prepare the finished edges. All you want is for the stuff to not shift around. So I think that I haven't done it, but I can't imagine that would be an issue at all. And also another question came in about um, fusing wool. And I have not done that. I, I think I will be soon because I'm signing up for a Sue Spargo class next week. Um, I called Kay Brooks, who is the um, engineer behind all the products. And I said, oh, and the other thing was that she wanted to be able to put it through the printer. Okay, well, there's only one raw edge fuse of mine you can put through the printer, and that is Applistick. And I said to Kay, don't do the others. Don't use the other web stuff. Don't do that. Don't put that for your printer. I asked Kay, I had she done it, and she said she's done it numerous times. And then I asked her, what set did she have the iron on? And it was medium, because you don't want to scorch the wool, okay? And maybe you'll have to do it a little bit longer and stuff and flip it back and forth, but she said it works like a charm. So, aloha from Kona. Okay, so this is, um, um, oh, here, uh, Roxanne says that Country Threads in Henniker, Henniker has it also. I'm assuming you're talking about the Kaleidoscope fabric by Andover. I This is just such a hit, this fabric line. So, I wonder if they will do something like it again. I, I don't know. So, what we're going to do today is talk about... Now, Betty, everybody's wondering if I'm having the 4th of July party this year, and I'm not. I can't handle it. So um, we're going to go up and see fireworks up at the cabin. I just, I, I can't get it together. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. 
So, okay, let's talk about binding here, all right? I prepared this binding and it's striped. And so how do you do a strip piece binding? I'm going to show you how you do that. And in the end, I am not sure I'm going to use this as a binding. If you want to be straight down with it, I have another idea now. I don't know. I don't know if it's too much. I don't know. I've got to live with it, okay? It might be too much. I'm thinking about do, you, um, doing it as a flange now and then doing a white binding on the outside. So I'm living with it. I mean, your binding is just as important as anything else when you go to make decisions about your quilt. One thing I do like using for binding actually are stripes. And this is kind of a variation of a stripe behind me, right? So let's talk about if I want to piece that together like that, all right? The first thing I did was I cut strips that were two and an eighth inch wide. And let me tell you, I was getting down to the scrabbles, the very, very last of all this stuff. And if you had some that, you know, okay, two and a half inches wide and then no longer than 12 inches wide, long, long, two and, okay, let me start over. I'm screwing up. Two and an eighth inch wide strip and make this, the length of the strips no more than 12 inches. Those were the guidelines that I set for myself. And two and an eighth inch wide binding is what I typically use. And note that they are all different um, sizes, it, you know, between, oh, what is it between? Oh, I don't know. Maybe eight to 12 or something like that. In other words, you don't want one that's like super uber long and one that's uber short. I mean, there's gotta be some sort of range in there. And because of the size of the quilt, those are random numbers I chose and I'm gonna live with it. Okay. So then what I want to do is I want to get those angles on 90 degree. All right. You can kind of see it right there over my shoulder. So right in front of me uh, to the left of my machine, I put uh, the purple horizontal and the red vertical. Okay. I want to piece it on an angle. So I've got two choices. I can press to get that 45. I can press it or I can draw with my friction pin a line, all right? And then what you do is you, you can see I kind of go exactly corner to corner. And then what you can do is stitch it. And you can see here that I use the drawn line. Now, if you're a little concerned that you're not lining it up right, and it's been a while since I've did this, I did first stitch it in a big long stitch to make sure that when I open it up, it comes out like this and it worked, all right? Um, and then I went and stitched it properly. Then you cut it, that's it. And you're ready to go. And again, when you get to say, oh wait, he cut it. Oh, that's great. I don't have the last slide in. So then, so let me grab this. Sorry, guys. Oh, well, it happens, right? <clears throat> let me get rid of this. So go away. Okay, so then what I did was I pressed it. So now... And I probably should use steam with this fabric. I didn't, and it's kind of falling apart. So then you just press it and press it and press it. And then this will give you a binding that will give you a double edge finish, okay? It's double here. This is my go-to binding technique. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to bind a little thing for you because I know we have beginners here and I know there's a lot of different ways that you can do binding, but I'm going to share with you my go-to, okay? First of all, okay, this is the thing I'm going to bind. And right before we went live, I squared it up. This is your last chance to make it so that it's square. Now, beware, if you have points 
on the edge, like triangles or something like that, you have to be aware of that. You just can't go chopping that off willy nilly. And sometimes it will be kind of funky, you know, but beware if you have points. In this case, I didn't, so I could just flop down my big ruler and do it. All right, let's get on this other camera. So here we have, oh, you know, the one thing I didn't do, I didn't set all this up. Let me get rid of the light, the light. There we go. Okay, so here we go. And what I, I'm going to bind it in green. And so what I'm going to do here is I am going to start, what is in there? Ooh. As if this is going to win any ribbons or anything, <laughs> but still. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching, say down here. I've got the folded edge to the outside, the raw, I mean, I'm sorry, the folded edge to the inside, raw to the outside, all right? And again, it is, it is double layered, right? Because I've pressed it. It's interesting how that um, kaleidoscope fabric didn't really hold the press. So what I'm going to do now is make it so that you guys can see, which... Maybe I can bring this down a little bit. Now, you know, I don't like it that dark. Oh, that's no good. That's no good either. Okay, I am going to use my quarter inch foot and I am using my 97D and I have engaged the dual feeds, all right? So I'm gonna start down here somewhere. I'm gonna leave this floppy flop right here. And these are mitered corners. I'm going to line this up exactly. I called two people and I said, look, do you, do you trim before or after you sew on the binding? And both people said before. What I want to do is I want to come down here and I'm going to stop one quarter inch to the raw edge down here at the bottom, okay? Now, on my foot, there is a marker that tells me that, but if you're a newbie, I want you to understand you're just gonna st stop about a quarter inch. All right, um, I'm not gonna worry about back stitching, but I am gonna worry about threading my needle. <laughs> Wait, is it threaded? No. You know, it's only taken me forever to figure out how to use this threader, but I know now. Don't hold it too tight. You pull, you pull back, you know, and whenever I'm working around my needle, I always, always pull my foot away from the gas foot. It's, it's completely moved away. All right. If I can even get in a little bit more here. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Cause we, so I'm going to come along here. See my little mark. I am going to take a little back stitch. On. And then I'm going to turn it around. And here's the trick. I'm going to take here like this. I'm folding it back. And then I'm going to fold it up. And then I'm going to go again. Again, my foot is way underneath my chair right now. Knock on wood. I And all the way from the edge, I'm sewing. Coming on in. Say, knock on wood. I've never done it. Sewn over my finger. I'm going to knock on wood. Okay. And I've got three more corners. So you can watch, again, you can mark it with a pencil, you can mark it with a pin, P-I-N. Oh, so funny. The one thing, there were two things we just found tons of. One was money, change, little change everywhere in the studio. And then the other was um, pins. 
<laughs> or needles. <laughs> the other, or just some things that were just ridiculous. Okay, fold up, fold down. And go down here. I'm pretty sure my kids are staying here on the 4th. Or for that Saturday so they can have a party. I just want to get out of Dodge. Now let me show you something tricky. Right in here, from here to here, is... No, it's not a quarter inch. Yes, it is. So there I'm at the edge. I know I am with that marking there. I'm going to go back. Turn. Up. Down. And if you go to thequiltshow.com and you put something like how to attach a, a machine binding or um, done, done by machine, I know we have videos on that. I know we have shows on that. This is just how I do it. Okay. I'm kind of nervous about showing the last part because it's, I can screw it up real fast. Okay. Up, down. Start from the edge, the folded edge. Now, I'm going to come down. i got to pull this up now. This is where I started, right here. I'm going to come to about here and stop. Maybe I will backstitch. All right. Cut. Yay. All right. So here's what we've got open now, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to overlap the top and the bottom. Now, how much do you overlap? How I figure it out is I, I, I want to overlap it whatever this is, okay? Let me think. I think that's how you do it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to, wait, I already cut that one. I'm going to go here. I'm going to cut this about right here. The smaller the piece like this, the harder it is to wrangle, I will tell you. And then I'm going to go like this. Right. Then I'm going to fold this on top. And, and then I'm going to cut right where that is. All right. Now, the truth of it is, once I cut that, so the overlap is this big. What I usually do is I go and I take off another eighth of an inch. Okay? Just because I tend to get tucks. Okay, now comes the big ta-da. Now you take these guys, whoops, cut under here. You take these guys, okay? And this guy, like this. If you want, you can pin it. Sure, that's gonna be right. It's gonna be right. Drop a little pin in here. A little pin in down here. And like how I showed you to do the other strips, you're gonna cut so corner to corner. If that makes you nervous, I usually just I just go for it, okay? I might want to take this little pin here so I know. If it makes you nervous, you can take your ruler and make your little mark like that and sew on it. What would we do without these friction pins? Yeah. And this is unnatural now because you have to bunch and scrunch and all this stuff. And again, the smaller the piece like this, the harder it is to do. I don't know why. 
If you're doing a little itty bitty 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 thing, you might not want to do a double fold binding. And we have videos on that also. All right. Take these out. Pull this back up. Yay! Yay, yay, yay! Now I'm going to go in there. I'm going to cut this. Be very careful. You've got things flopping in every single direction in the world here. I would go press it, make sure that's all going in the same direction. I see John coming in with questions, but I'm not going to press it just because, right? So now I'm going to go back. And see, if I didn't take that other little eighth of an inch, I'm telling you, this would be too big. You know, so just going to finish up. Again, I would have pressed it. Even there, there's a little fold with that extra eighth taken off. Let's take a look at that. It's not going to be an issue. Right there. It is not going to be an issue when you fold it over at all. Now let's get way down. So then what you do is you flip it to the back. I love Wonder Clips for this. I sometimes will even like press it a little bit and then flip it to the back and then whip sew it down. But the little Wonder Clips help me from stressing. But let's look at the corner and what you do here. So here you've got the miter. So when you turn it, oh, oh look at that, look at that. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this when I get there. And then I've got my miter on the front. I mean, that's sloppy. Yeah, you, you gotta finagle it a little bit. Finagle it. And then you got a miter on the front. Oh, sorry, a miter on the front. That is a blurry on the front. Miter on the front, miter on the back. Um, some people believe um, when they're sewing down the binding that they should go and sew down the miter. I never bother. Again, I don't win ribbons. So that's how easy it is. Now let me tell you something else. When I bind it, I use my 80 weight poly because it's super strong and it the color just blends in like silk. It's To me, it's stronger than my 60 weight. All right. So John brought in a question. Which la label maker did I, am I using? Um, I got the brother one on Amazon. I love it. Let's see. If you put the miters in the opposite direction, it creates less bulk. You're right, Roxanne. Thank you for that. Um, I was a little nervous about doing this part, so I kind of, you know, skipped through it. So many different ways to do it. Creative. How do you add a new post in the forum? Liani, I'm going to hope John sees this and he'll come in and talk to you. We are significantly disappointed with our forum. You should be able to leave a post. You do have to be logged in as a star member, and that's a safety precaution. If you're not a star member, you can go look in the forum, but you can't leave messages, and it's to keep naughty people out of it. Um, so that's really important. Number one, make sure you're logged in. And then you can leave questions and all that. Um, and if you're a paid member, then you can put stuff down. And again, I apologize. I know the system didn't used to be that way, but it was strongly recommended that we do that to keep um, people from other countries coming in and you know blowing it up because that stuff happens, right? So, but we are working on it. How many inches of binding are required for this quilt? Ah. I don't know. I didn't measure. I didn't measure. What I do, where did that binding all go? What I do is, actually this is a good little tip. So thank you for asking that. I do have to repress this. It's fallen apart. Maybe I'll put some, um, that acorn starch on it. Just a little bit. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll fold it in half and then I'll fold it in half again. So I've got equal tails down here. And then I take it 
to the largest side of the quilt because this is a lot longer than the other side. And if I've got enough to make it on, let's pretend it were square, then I know I've got enough. So um, whatever the, if you wanna know how many inches, you can go measure the quilt and, and see, and then I would add at least another 12 inches if 18, if not 18. Just for the mitering thing, for, um, for the finishing thing and all of that. Good question. Do I press my seams open? No, I don't. I press them all in one direction. Margo pieced her, oh, Margo pieced, Margo, you pieced your binding. Okay, I'll have to go look at your picture again. I'm thinking about using it as a flange, and if I do, then I'm gonna have to cut this thing down, and that's a whole nother lesson. All right, I always steam press twice. This is from Karen, once from the front, and the next time from the back to make sure you cover the stitches. Stitch in the ditch from the front. Huh, I think that's for finished, right? Karen, you're talking about for finished? Okay, Lon, okay, um, um, Leone, Leone, I have a tough time. I'm paid up and logged in, but can't find a way. Um, maybe we need to have John do a video on it, and or I think Barbara has done it a couple times too. I, I can't help you right here, right now, because I just can't. Um, we'll take care of you one way or another. If you email, hey, if you email me at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at Gmail, I'll see what we can figure out for you, okay? We really, I mean, despite all the trauma we've had with this new site, um, we, we are committed to taking care of you people. In fact, somebody said something about, um, I, I'm like a duck in water. I'm cool and collected on top and my feet are going like this <laughs> underneath the surface. And there's some truth to that. Um, okay. So Christy says, I always do my binding like I'm showing me, except I sew it to the back, bringing it down to the front and then sew it down. Okay. That's how you would do finished binding, right? right? You just sew it right down on the edge. Um, the perimeter plus 12 inches, Susie says, would be required. So that's her magic number is 12 inches to add. Um, using the scrap pieces to measure, that's a good tip. I never knew how to overlap. Thanks. Um, did, do I iron by dry or steam on quilts? Um, you know, I'm, I'm very, it depends on the binding. I mean, the batting, it depends on all of that. And um, this is going to have cotton in it, so I don't worry about however hot it is. If it was wool, I'd be careful. You know, don't go so hot. I don't know about uh, bamboo. Okay, so Jackie does length plus length plus width times two inches. Okay, so she does her bindings at two inches um, wide. Um, and then plus 12 to 18 inches extra long. I like two and an eighth just because it gives my hands a little relief. Also, I think it depends on the kind of batting you have. I mean, if you have thicker batting, you gotta take that into consideration. Well, she's not doing two inches. What? She's just doing that times that times two, so you get the whole roundness. Come here. Sorry, you know, you're, you're shaved, you're fine. No, someone's asking about who is paid and is logged in. And well, how, so how do we, she, Okay, so just say, come here and tell me. Stop it, come tell me. 45 years. <laughs> okay, so what's she saying? Well, what she was saying is she takes this side, uh -huh. this side times two, which gets you the other two sides. Oh. It's not two inches. Okay. okay. Math, my strong point. <laughs> my super strong point. So I'm continuing... Robert Kaufman has a wonderful app for your iPhone that does the math for figuring out a lot of quilt stuff. Okay, thanks, Paul. Robert Kaufman. Yeah, he just, he set me straight, Jackie. He just set me straight. <laughs> Again, not my strong suit, math. So, I'm gonna continue to clean here today and label and label and label. I love that stupid labeler. 
And I hope this has made sense to you. Uh, I think I will do something with the flange at some point in here and show you how to do that if you'd be interested in that. It's really super easy. And, and uh, Wednesday is great l labeling ideas. And then um, Friday is the tour of the 75, 75, well, it's organized 90%. I, we still have 40% to do on that back wall. Have a great day. Um, if you're up in the Pacific Northwest, stay cool. Uh, I heard all the hotels were sold out. Um, don't, you go to a cooling center if you need to. I just, I can't, I can't imagine the heat. And the problem is a lot of you up there, you don't have air and that's just horrible. Drink lots of water. Um, cause I want to see you here on Wednesday and heat can really do a number, a number on us. Okay. Let's see. Is Barbara on Friday? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. John, is Barbara on Friday? Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Rondi. Um, Barbara is taking this Friday off, but she's already got her for this month, but she's got the videos ready to go. So thank you for saying that. I thought it was something like that, but I wasn't sure. And I'll be taking off some time. Oh, Donna. I'll be taking off some time uh, after the 4th because I'm taking a Sue Sparkle class. I'll know more about wool. <laughs> so at the virtual Sister Outdoor Quilt Show. Okay, uh, check on your neighbors if they're elderly and in the heat zone. Yes, please. One last story. I can remember my parents... Um, got a call from PG&E or whatever. And I mean, this is when they were already like this, okay? And my dad agreed to not use air conditioning for whatever reason. We go in their house, it was almost 90 degrees. And I'm like, you can't do this. Well, my dad is, you know, ex-Navy military. And if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it and or do what he promised. And so I finally had to call and say to him, I talked to the fire chief. You can die, okay? You can die, um, and I didn't actually talk to the fire chief, but he turned back on his air. So no heroics out there, people. We need all the quilters in the world we can get. And do check on your neighbors. Thank you for that. I guess I'm the elderly now. What am I going to do when the kids come over here to check on me? <laughs> okay, I'm rambling. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.